Welcome to the No Compromises Tiny House. My name is Kenton Zurbin, and this is my house that I live in. I want to show you all the systems on it because it's truly off-grid and I think it's phenomenal. But I'm a little biased, so let me show you and you form your own opinion. So let's start with the off-grid systems for solar. We've got three panels down low and seven on the roof. Each panel is 305 watts. This is a three kilowatt solar system for a tiny house, yes. But it means I don't have to change my lifestyle much. So I can spend as much time on the computer as I want and I have an AC fridge. The sun cools my food, I love it. So 10 panels, but let's, before going to uh, the evacuated solar tubes and other solar technology, let's go around to this side of the house. Um, I've got two things on there I wanna show you. The first is a triple insulated wood stove pipe. Um, it has a double wall piping inside of it, then a six inch one wrapped around that with rocks all stuffed down the middle. It makes for a very well insulated pipe for cold, cold climates uh, where your pipe wants to cool off and cause creosote buildup in it. You don't want that. So that's the wood heat system. The windows is worth noting as well. Every house, every window on the house is operable and that allows me to turn the whole thing into a breezeway. So good to have that extra comfort when you live in the countryside uh, and you want to get that extra breeze through. Mm, so nice on a hot summer day. Let's show you now the ventilation system. So ventilation is extremely important for human health, uh, avoiding moisture buildup inside your house and ensuring that you have fresh oxygen. You don't want to live in a coffin. So this is one of the best products on the market for ensuring ventilation on a tiny house. It's called the Lunos HRV. Um, and I've got two of them set up in the house. They're phenomenal technology. It allows you to get your heat back while still getting that oxygen and pumping out moisture and any other things that are off gassing in your house. I'm super excited to show you the inside of the house later and uh, show you how I use these strategically. Moving right along, two things to show you. The first is a RV water outlet. So this allows me to hook up if I wish and actually fill my water tanks inside from this exterior point. There is also an outlet so I can move water from inside my tanks inside the house out, say for the garden. So this is a, a possible point to be on grid connection and also get water out. However, I mentioned tanks. And I'll show you those inside later, but I have almost 2,000 liters of water storage inside the house, which allows me to have water filled and live through the winter because this is sometimes hard to winterize in a cold Canadian climate. You don't always have to put one of these on a tiny house though. I chose to do this, so I had on-grid and off-grid capabilities. I don't have to run on my tanks. I could have this pressurized city water and it runs my whole house, or I can fill my tanks, unplug this, put it away, and now I have water storage in the house and I'm off-grid. So that's how I get water in and out of my tiny house if I wish. Uh, these are the panels we already looked at. Coming further in, we have evacuated solar tubes. And you know, before I even mention this kind of fancy technology, you have to understand how the sun works for your climate. This is why I've got all these gorgeous windows on the south side of my house, is they allow the sun in to heat up my house passively. But it doesn't need to end there. That's what these are for. These are special tubes with a refrigerant running down the middle and a black surface on the inside. The air's been sucked all out of them, so they can capture the heat from the sun, put it in that refrigerant, move it inside, and heat up my domestic water. Yes, my shower water is heated by the sun. It's one of the ways I'm able to reduce my propane use and uh, live in accordance with my values and have a light footprint. Coming around to the front of the house, we've got a lot of things to show you. So I'm gonna quickly go over these. So I did wanna have a potential point of propane use outside the house. So that's for hooking onto a barbecue. This is my battery box. So the battery box holds my batteries, but it has to stay ventilated for safety reasons. Otherwise this front door can all come off and I can get access and maintain my batteries. There is two of my travel tanks here. These are Viking propane tanks. There's translucent, so you can see the liquid levels of propane inside of them when you shine a light on this one side. But I don't run off these, these are just for travel mode. Is actually, as you can just see there, a propane pig, 500 pounds of propane. I go through one of those a year for water heating, space heating, and cooking. $260 a year for my heating, guys. This is Alberta, Edmonton, Alberta. Real cool. You can see a little bit of, a, of the rest of the hitch system here. 
Um, this is actually going to from my generator. Uh, you can see here, my generator is a Honda EU3000, and it has an auto throttle and auto start kit. So if my batteries ever drop too low, it kicks itself on and charges my batteries, preventing my batteries from ever getting harmed, which is one of the biggest concerns or mistakes that happens when you start to try to live off grid. So the generator is not necessary. You don't have to have one, but for redundancy and peace of mind, it's a good idea. It allows me to never have to worry in case my batteries die. It allows you to back up your systems. Most utility systems in homes are extremely fragile. One line or one thing stops working and you don't have a house anymore. When you're living off grid, you don't want to take that risk. So I backed up every single one of my systems and my batteries meet my demand. I've never had to turn on the generator except for to keep the thing in healthy condition. Four years of not turning that thing on, but it's there in case I need it. All right, let's go show you guys the inside. I'm super stoked. Um, I took a lot of pride and care. I used to be an art teacher at one point in my career. So I looked at the inside as a canvas, a canvas for my life and that I didn't want to have compromises. I wanted to have a tiny space that would meet my needs, but look phenomenal.